Relief is on the way for Americans with student loan debt. Thanks so much for joining us here on Denver 7 Plus. I'm Jason Grenauer. Earlier today, President Joe Biden laid out his plan to forgive and help Americans pay their student loans, including new details not known before today. So here's a look at the president's plan. $10,000 of federal student loan debt will be forgiven for Americans making less than $125,000 a year. The forgiveness doubles to $20,000 if you received Pell Grants. Also, the current payment pause will be extended through the end of the year. And once payments resume, those on income-based repayment plans will have payments capped at 5% of their income. Biden spoke about the impact of the plan earlier this afternoon. The burden is so heavy that even if you graduate, you may not have access to the middle-class life that the college degree once provided. Many people, many people can't qualify for a mortgage to buy a home because of the debt they continue to carry. A lot of folks are even putting off uh, starting families because of the cost. And the dream of starting or owning your own business is just way off in the distance with the debt that's, uh, that you know, so many are saddled with. So on the heels of that announcement this afternoon, we're going in depth on student loans. Let's begin with a look at the scope of the issue. Now, according to a report from Wallet Hub, Americans have more than $1.6 trillion with a T in outstanding student loan debt. That's spread among more than 43 million people, making the average balance around $37,000. Now, $10,000 of forgiveness will go a long way for a lot of borrowers here in Colorado. Denver 7's Rob Harris begins our 360 in-depth coverage. This would be a very significant decision by the Biden administration. According to the Education Data Initiative, there are about 774,000 student loan borrowers in Colorado, and they owe a little less than $37,000 each on average. But research from Student Loan Hero shows that nearly a third of borrowers in Colorado would have their entire student loan debt eliminated with a $10,000 forgiveness. Of the ones left over, it'd mean you know, a little bit less than a third the amount that they owe would be left over on average. Uh, so in that regard, I think that the economic impact is, frankly, it's kind of hard to overstate. Behind those numbers and dollar signs are real people, students and former students, whose opinions on student loan forgiveness vary as much as their areas of study. For those students or families that still owe student loans, the forgiveness of loans, even up to $10,000, would be very significant. On the other hand, there's a lot of Americans and American families that have paid back their loans, that have been paying back their loans for years. They probably don't see this as being very fair. Earlier this year, we talked to borrowers both in favor and opposed to student loan forgiveness. Gabby Gonzalez is a first-generation college student at CU Boulder. She's worked four jobs to help pay for school. And she told us what forgiveness would mean for her family. That would be such a huge weight off my shoulders uh, because I don't have to worry about my parents. And I do have conversations with them a lot about that burden and I do feel guilty. Everyone deserves an education. On the flip side, there are borrowers like Layla Seeper who kept making payments throughout the pandemic even when they didn't have to. Seeper says student loan forgiveness is unfair to those who have paid off their loans. That was a knee jerk reaction like, oh my gosh, I just finished paying this. I should have done what everybody else did and not paid. And then maybe I would have had a chance at having it forgiven. Life is about choices and life is about sacrifices. While many college graduates are breathing a sigh of relief tonight, up until this point, Americans were mostly split on whether enough is being done to relieve student loan debt. For a little context, a poll conducted by CNN this past spring found 49% of Americans think the U.S. government is doing too little. 24% said the government is doing too much. Feelings toward debt relief may also depend on age. 70% of adults younger than 35 said the government is doing too little. That number drops to 50% for those 35 to 49, then down again to just 35% among those age 50 and older. Student loan relief comes as many Americans grapple with higher prices for everyday needs because of high inflation. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the impact student loan forgiveness could have on inflation. According to a new CNBC poll, 59% of Americans believe forgiveness will worsen inflation. Respondents said canceling student debt would give Americans more money to spend and therefore increase inflation. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget agrees. One of the easiest ways to do that is to ask people to start paying back the debt they already owe, to start making the principal payments 
that they're they already agreed to. Many economists, on the other hand, don't agree with that assessment. Economic Policy Institute President Heidi Shearholtz argues that because we've already become accustomed to our finances without student loan payments because of the pandemic and that pause, any impact on inflation would be greatly limited. Moody's Mark Zandi says forgiveness and the resumption of payments would limit growth and be disinflationary. Finally, an assessment of the Committee for Responsible Federal Budgets report by the Roosevelt Institute found several issues with its methodology. The Roosevelt Institute instead argues that canceling student debt would increase wealth, but not inflation. Let's take a closer look at the numbers from the government side of the equation. According to the Government Accountability Office, the Federal Direct Loan Program was supposed to generate $114 billion between 1997 and 2021. But due to the complexities of the program and the price of suspending payments, that program will actually cost $197 billion. That's even before any forgiveness is taken into consideration. Another factor is the popularity of income-driven repayment plans. The Education Department thought it would be a niche program used only by those with serious financial problems, but nearly half of all direct loans end up in an income-based repayment plan. We'll have much more on the impact of today's announcement a little bit later on here on Denver 7 Plus. But in the meantime, we want to hear what this means for you. Send us your comments over to 360 at the DenverChannel.com.